How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here. Thanks for stopping by. So today is going to be my first YouTube collaboration video, and it's going to be with the Wildlife Brothers, Evan and Harrison Black. You gotta admit, that's an awesome last name. Anyways, uh, they have a YouTube channel called the Wildlife Brothers, and it's a really good channel. Um, they actually have a lot of reptile and amphibian videos and some other wildlife videos too, so you should check it out. Today, we're going to hit the woods and hopefully find some more reptiles and amphibians and just about anything cool. I think I see them. Check it out. You can see them heading across the bridge right now. You can tell it's them. Shh. How you guys doing? Cool, man. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, Harrison. same with you. Chris. Uh, Evan. How are you guys doing? Very cool, well. man. So you guys twins, right? Yes, yes. identical That's twins. That's awesome. was in a shed, so we, we couldn't work with her for right. too long because we didn't want her to get stressed out and mess up her shed. Right, right. Seriously. So we, we had to let her go pretty quickly. But yeah, we'll, huh. we'll probably be heading back there in the next couple weeks to try and film that episode. Oh, that's no, cool. an adult. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, an right. that's an adult. They don't get really small. Wow. So, uh... Nice. There it is. Right there. Right, that's get this. Right there. First rock he flips. First rock. Hey, guys, you want to check this out? <laughs> and what's he yeah. find? What so do you find? I just got a that's ring neck snake, snake, so that's that's incredible. Didn't even have the camera rolling. It's a shame, though. So, First yeah, rock. We're definitely going to get that guy on film. Dude, he <laughs> <Yes>. rocked, man. <laughs> Alrighty. That's, that's how it's job. done. <laughs> A little green frog, northern green frog, we found out. Oh, it just started under. Uh. Come here, buddy. There you go. Yeah, you just, they all keep jumping. Ground's very soft, though, that's good. Yeah, yeah. and get them without getting pinched. Maybe I will get pinched. It's not so bad unless they're the real big ones. Are you good at catching crayfish? Yeah, we. what I like to do is kind of back them up into a little pocket of rocks and then I just put my hand uh, down on them. Yeah. Filming this? Absolutely. There's a crayfish I just saw. Really? Probably a brookie. And then, you know what you might want to mention? It's like, up north, that's the color of their belly. That's the yeah, color that they, they have. Yeah, they get red as they go down. Yeah, which is uh, one of the reasons for that is to look more like the coral snakes. Sure, yep. All right. <laughs> no way. I can't believe you just flipped this. Yeah, right, I'm, so I'm pretty hey, psyched about that. Now, these guys are going to be found all across the eastern seaboard from up here in the northeast, like in Pennsylvania. Now, the, the ringneck snake is going to be eating mostly soft-bodied invertebrates, especially earthworms. That's one of their favorite foods. Now, these guys do have a lot of predators. What you see here is about maximum size for these guys. This is a fully grown adult. So, and then let's get some exploring shots later. When we start doing salamanders, we'll get exploring shots. Of, oh, um... How about this? Do you want to get in the shot with Chris? Yeah, that will be the outro. I think all three of us should be in the channel, unless you want to be behind the camera for that. I figure I'll be behind the camera. Okay, sweet. So they even dress the same really hard to tell who's who, but I found a way. What do you got? There you go, dude. Sorry about the piece of moss at the back oh, there. No worries. It's a great shot. So I don't know if you remember, but one of my older videos, I was talking about how stacking rocks may actually look awesome, but it's not really good for the environment or wildlife. So uh, what do you have to say about it? What are you about to do? So what I'm about to do is actually take these rocks, and it's a little bit loud, 
But what we're going to do is we're going to disperse the rocks back into the ecosystem. We're not just going to make a little pile. We're going to put them all back nice and flat. And the reason we're doing that is because originally these rocks are part of the habitat of all of the salamanders and other species that we're out here looking for. So by putting all the rocks back nice and flat, we're creating more homes for the animals. Right, which will help replenish populations. As you know, the populations are declining all over the place, and one of those, one of the biggest reasons is habitat loss. Okay, and then the soil is also becoming a bit too basic from all the earthworms. That's another story. Nice. Yeah, I usually find the sallies under under the pale rocks. There's a lot of uh, frog activity there. And the snakes I find, are, find under the dark rocks, on average, you know, to, to average it out. But really, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. It depends on the day and the time of day and all that good stuff. Because that's where the long tails... Have you checked that rock? No, I didn't. The black one? No way. What is that? That looks like a ribbon, dude. Get it, get it. Oh, it's... <laughs> wow, okay. Wow. What? <laughs> Did I just not... I walked right into that one. <laughs> I was wondering why it didn't move. That was awesome, bro. That was so good. No way. That was great. Oh. I was hoping that would work. <laughs> I was like, what? Since when do we have green snakes? Like, oh, is that just a, an abnormal uh, smooth green snake or something? It was just whatever I found. Now these should be underwater, but they're not right now. Inside of each of these is a caddisfly larva. And they make their, their houses, they construct their houses out of gravel and pebbles found in the water. And their saliva is basically, they have a glue, a glue-like saliva that they use to glue their stones together to make those little uh, houses to protect them. My, my preferred method of catching these guys yeah. is actually, they, they get freaked out when they see hands. So what I'll do is I'll scoop up a, mug, a bunch of the dirt they don't even realize what's going on until they're in your hands. Oh, cool. Oh. It's a good idea. Really hard. Actually, you only were like not even do falling in the shot. You want to just film it like in my hand. Yeah, just talking Found ourselves a June bug. And it's June. Go figure. But you can find these beetles. Now, yeah, that's a June bug in June, but most of the time you can find them throughout most of the summer. So we have here another northern duck. They're looking pretty good. Juvenile dusky. Sweet, let's do it. So we've been finding a lot of northern two-line salamanders today and quite a few duskies, but I gotta admit, those two-line salamanders are really hard to grab onto, especially in this flowing water. As soon as they hit that current, they surrender to it and off they are. Really difficult stuff. However, 
They just found a really big prime specimen of a northern two-line salamander. Check this out. He is absolutely gorgeous and one of the first that we've actually been able to get in front of the cameras because these guys are so fast. As Chris was mentioning, they will jump right into the current and we will never see them again. Seriously. Just like that. Just like that. We've had entire days of herping where we've spent like three, four hours from those rocks to these rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. Yeah, same this here. Is one of the best spots for for herping if you don't feel like doing a whole trek up the nature trail area. So, so that goes to show you, just one tree falling over can change everything. Absolutely. Can change your diversity, what's living there, and uh, just change the whole habitat. So. One of the best things about exploring nature is you can be going to the same spot over and over and just the seasonal changes and the weather changes of the year or of the week determines what you may or may not find. But also the changes in habitat, just a, a, a new log introduced can just change all sorts of things. So uh, you never know what to expect. And actually this year has been particularly conducive for turtles. Mm -hmm. We've seen a ton yeah. of common musk turtles, way more than we ever have before. And just today we caught some. Last time we were here, we caught a bunch. Yeah, we'll have to take you out wow. here sometime before they get big enough to go Dude, out on their own and find some musk turtles good. for you. I'm all about that. This was a bit of a teaser video with the Wildlife Brothers. And uh, you see, we found a lot of cool stuff. We did, you know? Yeah, I'll never get over the ring neck. I mean, that's a great way to start our, so our, our friendship, really. Absolutely. Yeah. That's like the ambassador of our future, hopefully. And uh, we did a lot of cool herps, you know, found a lot of crayfish and uh, two lion salamanders, of course, and duskies and things like that. I had a great time meeting you guys. Absolutely. Yeah, it was this a was great a pleasure. A pleasure. Yeah. And Same an honor. here. I really look forward to doing more videos with these guys, and you gotta check out their channel, The Wildlife Brothers. If you like my videos, you're definitely gonna like their videos. They really go into the herps, they got some great shots and a lot of knowledge. I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> They're like robots, man. That's why they look the same. That's the secret. That is the secret. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Once again, Chris Ignato and The Wildlife Brothers signing out. Okay, so this video was just a small teaser of what's in store in the future on doing videos with the Wildlife Brothers. And I gotta say, Evan and Harrison are really fun to hang out with. Their knowledge is, is amazing, their memory is really cool, and their enthusiasm is great. I really loved hanging out with you two, Evan and Harrison, but I have one question. Why did you have to wear identical outfits on the first day I meet you? You guys already look exactly the same. You know how tricky it is to know who I'm talking to? But I finally know who's who now. Anyways, I had a great time with you guys. It was a lot of fun. And I can't believe you found that ring neck under the first rock. So really cool stuff. Can't wait for future videos with the Wildlife Brothers. So thanks a lot for watching, viewers. And once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. So be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit.